Hey everybody, it's Safia Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here today to talk about VHS 94. <sighs> now for starters, this series, I'm not that big of a fan of at all. I think that the first one, it's tough because... I have I have a real problem with anthology movies because I have pet peeves about them and they really irritate me honestly like with most anthology movies my biggest pet peeve is that the main character always dies and <laughs> that's literally true for like almost every single found footage movie I can think of and it's so irritating because it just, it makes the whole movie pointless. It's like, why would I want to watch that if I know how it's going to end? Like, it, it just, it's so uninteresting and so pointless. And so with this one, I didn't even watch the trailers. And I think that that was a good thing because I probably wouldn't have watched it if I saw this, saw these stories in the trailers. Uh... But with the first one, there was like a good story or two. I really liked the one where the guy was in the motel with the the demonic girl with the big eyes. I thought that that one was really good. That was actually like the standout of the of the movie, even though I think the main character dies in it. And then I think there was another good one where... You know, there were some good concepts in the first one. I thought the first one was definitely the best in terms of concepts for anthology stories. And it made sense, at least, you know, how they found the tape and everything. And Oh, we'll get to that. Then the second one came, and <laughs> I hated the second one. All I can remember about the second one was that there was the cult one. And the cult one was actually, like, really scary, but it wasn't, it was kind of stupid. And it was just kind of like, throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. But I still, I'll say that the cult one was better than basically any of the ones in VHS 94. Except for one of them, I think. And then I never watched the third one, the VHS Viral. Because I wasn't really interested in that. It sounded kind of like a cheap cash grab type of movie. And then I never watched the show, the TV show I guess they made. So this is the this is the next one in the series and it's a Shudder original. And people said that's already an indicator of bad quality. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. You know, I haven't really watched anything else on Shudder except for the amusement park which was a you know a lost George Romero film but this movie sorry my nose is stuffy so that's why I'm a little allergies I guess uh, this VHS 94 movie starts out with probably one of the most bad wraparound stories I've ever seen for an anthology movie the SWAT team runs into this big building and they're looking around for people and there's all these people with their eyes uh, taken out, their eyeballs taken out. There's a video store employee and stuff like that. And they're, What's really hilariously bad though is that they're shouting, Search Warren! Search Warren! Search Warren! And they keep... <laughs> They just keep shouting search warrant over and over again as they're running through this abandoned building. <laughs> it's like, this is so, this is so cringeworthy. <laughs> it's so bad. And I'll say that too. That is the main problem with this movie. Besides the stories being bad, the main problem is the bad dialogue. Like these these lines that you hear, and not only are they not bad lines... But they're also lines that are terribly delivered by these actors. And that's the thing is that when you have like actors who haven't really been in anything, you don't want them to say really bad lines like this because they'll really deliver them poorly. 
like in Halloween, 1978, they give all the crazy lines to Donald Pleasance because he was the most experienced actor from the film, and so he was the one who was able to deliver those lines convincingly, whereas all the other actors, you know, they just got, like, typical types of lines. And this movie, I, I don't think it has anyone that I really know or have seen before, and it's 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 really like a... It's a shame, because I think that this was a huge waste of time. And it's it's sad, because it's... I thought that it would be really good to have, like, a, a 90s nostalgic throwback movie, an anthology movie, like, about the 90s, and to have, like, these found footage movies from the 90s. You know, that's a big thing on YouTube, is that people will look up all the time for real crime footage of, like, fan, real found footage from, like, the 80s and 90s. And, you know, you you can see there's some really, really good uh, footage, like uh, the, the catacombs tape and then, you know, stuff like that. You know, there are some really good found footage that, that's actually real. Uh, this movie was trash. It was straight up trash, uh, unfortunately. But there was some good in it. I don't think it was totally bad. It, it started off on a good note with the anthology stories, but then it just devolved into trash. So let's break it down story by story. The wraparound story is the worst part. It, or it's the second one. Eh, eh. It's a tie with the, with the last anthology story for being the worst one in the movie. But it is really like... Like, it's just, none of these stories had to take place in the 90s. That's probably my biggest issue with this movie, is that none of these stories felt like the 90s. None of them felt like ideas particularly specific to the 90s era, like, if I were to make an anthology story from the 90s, I would research 90s serial killers. I would research 90s true crimes, 90s weird things that happen, weird events, 90s conspiracies, uh, you know, 90s world events. You know, I would research like everything 90s or just think about like if I had lived in the 90s, like, uh, you know, what were some memories from then, or I would ask someone else what, what their memories were, and then I would create, like, a, a good story around something, like, uniquely 90s. Th this story was the only one that really had to take place in the 90s, but it was literally only because of, like, one thing that you could easily change with one word, <laughs> literally one word being changed changed around and so that was trash and I'm not going to spoil it obviously because I know that some people will watch this movie unfortunately I wouldn't recommend it honestly I would just recommend watching specific stories in it and then just skipping the rest but then even then I don't know I, I really hate anthology stories and how predictable they are, and how worthless they are, and how just, I mean, they're just useless, they're just like, it's the same old thing, every single story, it's it's like, why would I want to watch this when I could watch like a full story, like, a lot of them feel like intros to stories, rather than full stories themselves, and so, yeah, if you want an example of some good anthology stories, I would recommend checking out R.L. Stein's Tales to Give You Goosebumps. Those books, you know, they have some really good anthology stories like The Perfect School and uh, An Old Story and stuff like that. Those are good examples of how to do anthology. Or The Willies was pretty good. Uh, Creep Show is not very good, except, yeah, no, I don't like Creep Show. Uh, Chillerama is a is a fun movie. 
you know, Chillerama was good. I like Chillerama, but the, the, these these stories were not worth it. They were just not. But that that wraparound story, I would give it like a an F. There, there was nothing good about it. The ending was trash. You know, it was very nonsensical what happens at the end. I might talk about it in spoilers, but I might not. Uh, <laughs> so, the Storm Dream one is the next story, and it's basically about this reporter who f finds out about a, a Rothma creature, uh, and it's it's like a rat person creature that people have have spotted, and there's basically the storm drain, and they go inside there to try to find it, and honestly, it, it was a really good idea for a story, and I thought that it would be really good, but the way that it was executed was, was not very good. It, it lacked creativity, it lacked originality, and it lacked good dialogue. The dialogue was trash, once again. There was a jump scare or two. You know, this movie didn't really have many jump scares, but when it did, they were always terrible and not scary. And so I thought that this story really used too many jump scares in terms of, like, in comparison to all the other ones. But still... It has, I would say that the acting was, was good in this one compared to the others. I would say that it had the best setting. It had a really nice setting, you know, where you go inside a storm drain. You go inside this dark tunnel-y area. tunnel -y isn't a word. Uh, and so, yeah. I give the storm drain story a C-. minus. And then for some reason... They counted a commercial, a fake commercial, as a story. And I don't know what that was about. <laughs> there was a fake commercial for this thing called the Veggie Masher. And I thought that that was fine. It didn't really make sense, though. You know, another thing about the wraparound story is that they never explain that they find any VHS tapes until the very end. And they never explain, like, how they watch it. Like, did they watch it? beforehand and figure out like the like I just uh, maybe I missed something at the beginning but they they never really like showed them watching it and usually with these anthology wraparounds you know you'll see them watch it and you'll see their reaction so I thought that was stupid and so then the the commercial I guess you know it's it's like a, a C minus too I mean, it's really, I mean, I don't know why it's considered a story. Because they actually, like, credited it at the end, like, as one of the stories. I was like, yeah, that's that's not, that's, that's, uh, that's bizarre. <laughs> There's just some random commercial in the middle of this VHS tape with random vi videos inside it. Like, that's just stupid. And then there's the one about the wake. And that one I actually liked, kind of. I thought that that one was, like, actually pretty good. It was about this woman who was in charge of watching over and, and doing this wake. And basically she's all by herself and there's two video cameras set up uh, because they paid extra to videotape it. And the person in the coffin, I guess they had some terrible accident and so they're horribly disfigured. And, yeah, it's basically her all alone with the coffin and the remains. And I won't give anything else away, but it was actually pretty good. I liked it, and I thought that it was decent compar compared to the other ones. And I thought the acting was pretty good. Once again, had bad dialogue. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that, but still pretty good. I would say also one of the biggest issues that holds it back from being an A is that it has some really big plot holes that I'll talk about in spoilers. I mean plot holes that like if you submitted this to anyone who like had a brain they would ask you questions about these plot holes. So 
I give this a B minus. And the next story was actually the best one. And it was about, well, it was a foreign one. I'll say that too. That was the thing that set it apart. And now let's talk about that because it, it was a foreign one. And the reason why I, I say that is because it had subtitles. And I thought that that was the stupidest shit that I've ever seen because if you found this VHS tape randomly or any any way, you know, no, no VHS tape would have subtitles on it like this. Like, they should have just not had any subtitles because the acting was good enough to where you could tell everything that was going on. I thought that this one was actually really, really good. It was my favorite one. It was the standout one. It had the most gore. It had the most violence. It was the scariest, I guess, quote-unquote. None of them were really scary to me. But that it was the best, clearly. And it was the longest, too, which I'll say that. It was the longest story, so that's, that's something you could talk about. Because uh, just because it's longer... Basically, maybe it's better. It it really felt like an intro to a video game, though. It felt like an intro to, like, a Bioshock game. Because it's all about this missing girl and this mad scientist and his robot humanoid experiments. I won't say anything else. But I still really liked the story, and I thought that it was good. It was... You know, it was it was it was good. You know, I can't really say much without spoiling things, uh, so I guess I'll save it for spoilers. And I'll say too that it it was a little unpredictable, a little bit, and so that also helped. And again, I love the effects in this one. The effects were the standout of all the anthology stories. Like it really seemed like they just made this story, and. It was really good, and they were like, oh, let's put this in an anthology movie, and let's make these other anthology stories, too, to to put around this really good one. Uh, but I really don't think that it should have had subtitles. I think that that sort of took me out of it a little bit, because other than that, it was really pretty, you know, it was pretty good. I give it a, a, a B plus slash A minus. It would be an A- minus if they took off the subtitles. So then the last story is called Terror. And <laughs> there's really no terror in the story. It's all about... The, and I don't know if there was an agenda in writing this one. It was all about this Christian religious shit group of uh, rednecks who want to take over the government. And they want to overthrow the government and uh, they have all these guns and they have a secret weapon that's basically uh, um, I won't give it away they have a secret weapon and everything okay I give this one an F minus it was stupid it was horribly written in terms of the dialogue it was not scary it was predictable. It was annoying at some points for a reason that <laughs> it was really annoying. It was really like, just like, oh God, I can't, I can't wait for this to, to end because it's so stupid and so just not good. Kind of a waste of time in my opinion. The story concept itself too was pretty dumb. It was pretty dumb. So... <sighs> Overall, this was not very good of a movie. It was kind of a waste of time, honestly. Like, I kind of wish that I didn't watch it, and that I just... But, you know, I gotta release a review every day, so... <laughs> it's just another movie that I decided to review, and it's a new release, too, so... I don't know what to rate it in terms of food, because I feel like... The good stories in it, the two good ones, I don't really want to give them a bad rating. Like, I don't want to give some bad food uh, to, to rate them included. Uh, so, I'll just say that overall, it's like a D-minus movie. And 
the only reason it's not an F is because of those two good stories in the midst of all the shit. So, now on to spoilers. So, the only reason this movie, well, the wraparound has to take place in the 90s is because it's all about this uh, video nasty snuff film uh, cult. And they, it's never really explained, like, why they're a cult. Like, they have all these people in chairs dead. Uh, but it, 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 there's some bullshit about the videotapes being evil. Like, just really, like, bizarre writing. And they will only sell you these tapes on VHS. So, it can only take place in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. Other than that. None of them had to take place in the 90s, so that was a big issue for me. Uh, the Storm Drain one, I thought that the effects for the rat, the Rothma, it did not look good at all. And in fact, the video distortion effect in the editing actually made it look worse because the, the video kept on fuzzing and fuzzing to where you couldn't see the rat creature uh, clearly because of the the quote 90s VHS tapes effects and I thought that it was also like a really cool thing to make the whole movie look like a 90s VHS tape footage would uh, that was actually like something that I brought up with historical films is that it would be cool for certain stories that if you made it look like it it was shot during that time period like if you made uh if you made a movie about making Rocky, you know, shoot it like it would be shot in the 70s and make it look like it all takes place in the 70s in terms of the quality of the film because that makes it look like more authentic and it, it puts you in that world more. But these tapes did not. I thought that that was actually one of the downgrades of the movie because the, the tape effect actually kind of distorted the quality of the movie too because uh, each each of the ones was different because I guess they're bootleggers too this cult is, is bootlegging snuff films <sighs> just really really bizarre choices with this one <laughs> so I'm sure I'm not supposed to think about it this much but I'm I have a brain so uh, sorry if I'm using it uh, I can't just take it out and make myself a, a robot creature like in the the, the robot story. <laughs> so, then the, the wake story, it was really weird because they videotaped this wake. No one showed up. No one showed up except for this one guy in a trench coat and a mustache, and I couldn't even understand what he said because the audio was so low. And then he left, and. I don't know who he was, why he was there, or anything. I, I j just didn't understand this one. And then she tries to get out, and the front door has a chain and lock on it. And it's like, why is that? <laughs> See what I mean? And then all of a sudden, everywhere is storming. And then it turns out that the guy in the coffin is a zombie. Like, just... <laughs> What, 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 I, 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 what, what, what happened? Like, just, it's a zombie story? Like, it, 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 it. and then she, he turns her into a zombie, too. Uh, just completely bizarre. But I still really liked it. You know, it had good effects, too. I, it was really actually pretty scary at first. And it could have been really, really good. But it was just not well written. The robot story, you know, you have this girl with robot powers. She has a robot head, and and uh, she has a, an arm that she, it gets torn off, and she replaces it with a, a gun, and so it was literally like a video game, and I thought that that it was just it was good, and there really isn't much to say about it because it it was good, like it was, you know, it had so many good action moments it has so many good kills it was creepy it was good you know it uh it ends with her just roaming around and not knowing where to go because i think her camera battery ran out and so at least she's alive though so i'll say that at least 
it's not the same old shit with uh, killing off the main character. And then, uh, what was the next one? <sighs> terror. With Terror, they have a secret weapon, which is a monster. And it's a guy who basically can't be killed because he's actually a monster. But they keep on cutting away to that footage of the main story to show them killing him. And shooting him in the head, like different people in the group. And to show that he can't be killed. And it was just really annoying because they had this bell in the background. It was really annoying. I kept on doing that over and over again. And it ends, of course, with the monster breaking loose and killing everyone. And then actually he, he self-destructs and he blows up the whole place. And so I, th I thought at least... At least the ending was like a happy ending, I guess, with that one. But still, not good. And then the wraparounds, okay, it's it's over. So, yeah, this was really not good. I would say that also none of the stories really felt real at all. Except for, I guess, no, none of them. So that was a huge problem was that none of them felt real. And all of them, you know, with found footage, you have to be able to live inside the fantasy of pretending they're actual found footage tapes. But you can't because they're just so fantasy and they're just so bad. They're just so badly written that the dialogue, ugh, it was terrible dialogue. So overall, I would not recommend this movie. I would just recommend watching the Wake one and then watching the Robot Girl one. Other than that, throw this movie in the trash where it belongs. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment, and tell me what you thought about the VHS series. Should I watch the VHS viral movie? It has like a 3 out of 10 on IMDb. I don't want to watch that. <laughs> Maybe I'll watch it for like a drunk commentary and I'll make it fun. And then please subscribe to our channel for more movie reviews because I promise I won't always be so negative like this, but I apologize for being negative when I watch a bad movie. Excuse me. Like, wouldn't you be negative if you wasted... I mean, this was an hour and 40 minutes long. Oh, I can't believe I wasted that much time watching this movie. Uh, so goodbye, everybody. See you soon.